Hi, I'm Sheila Woodhouse. I'm a vestibular physiotherapist and I'm the Director of Vestibular Rehabilitation for LifeMark Health. Dizziness and balance disorders are one of the most common things that are going to bring people into your clinic. One of the more common complaints is actual vertigo or an illusion of motion taking place that isn't actually occurring for the patient. And the most common cause of that is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo or BPPV. In March 2017, the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery came out with new clinical practice guidelines for BPPV. And I want to go through these for you in case you didn't have time to read the 47-page article so that uh, we can make it quick for you to understand the new guidelines that they've come up with. So the first recommendation that they made in the guidelines is that clinicians should diagnose posterior canal BPPV when vertigo is reproduced in the Dix Hall Pike position associated with nystagmus that is an upward beating with a torsional component. If their vertigo is reproduced and you see that pattern of nystagmus, then you should either treat or refer to someone who can treat posterior canal BPPV. If their history suggests BPPV, but your Dix Hall Pike positions are negative, or you happen to see that the pattern of eye movement is in a horizontal plane rather than the vertical and torsional plane, then you should perform the supine roll test. Then that would suggest horizontal canal BPPV, in which case you should either treat that if you're familiar with that treatment or refer to someone who is familiar with horizontal canal management because it's, it's not the same maneuver that would treat your posterior canal BPPV. While it's true that cases of BPPV can resolve spontaneously, and that is an option to just use the wait and see approach, the recommendation is really more strongly towards actually treating this condition. Because as you're waiting to see if it resolves spontaneously, you're leaving your patients at risk of increased fall and other secondary complications. Whether you treat it or not, the recommendation is also that you see these people back at a one month period after the initial visit to make sure that their symptoms have fully resolved. If at the one month period patients still have continued symptoms, it's recommended that you refer a patient on to someone who can assess for unresolved BPPV or other conditions that might be responsible for your patient's symptoms. One of the options presented in the guidelines includes sending your patients for vestibular rehabilitation. At LifeMark Physiotherapy, we use infrared goggles to have a really close look at your patient's positional nystagmus. LifeMark vestibular therapists are trained to identify BPPV in a number of different variables and then to know which is the exact maneuver that is required to treat that variant. And in doing so, we can identify, is this actually BPPV? Is the nystagmus consistent with that? Or does it suggest other peripheral or central dysfunctions? In which case, we can alert you to the fact that there may be a different problem at play. Another strong recommendation that they made in the guidelines pertains to using a post-maneuver protocol or not. Years ago, we used to put people through a very rigorous post-maneuver protocol where we'd put them in a collar, and they were supposed to walk around with their head upright all day long. They weren't allowed to sleep laying down. They had to sleep propped up in a chair for a couple of nights. So very unpleasant for the patients. And fortunately, recent research has shown that the efficacy of the maneuver is not enhanced by doing all those extreme measures after the treatment. So the recommendation is that we abandon the post-maneuver protocols now, so that's great. Other recommendations that they emphasized was that we please try not to be sending these patients for radiographic imaging or to vestibular labs for vestibular function testing. That's a lot of additional healthcare dollars that is not appropriate for these patients. Unless, of course, there are other signs and symptoms that warrant additional follow-up of that nature. With respect to medications, the recommendations say that clinicians should not treat BPPV using vestibular suppressant medications like antihistamines or benzodiazepines. Keep in mind that vertigo is not always from BPPV, so the recommendation is also that clinicians either assess or refer to someone who can assess for dizziness and unsteadiness coming from conditions other than BPPV. If the problem isn't BPPV, Vestibular rehab is shown to be extremely effective to manage a vast number of both inner ear and central vestibular problems. To 
to read the full clinical practice guidelines, you can find them at entnet.org, and that also shows the various assessment and treatment techniques. At LifeMark, we have locations from coast to coast, and over 75 of them have therapists who are trained to provide vestibular rehabilitation and help with dizziness and balance problems. So please go to lifemark.ca to find a location close to you.